أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته peace and blessings be upon you all our viewers wherever you may be watching welcome once again to another installment another episode of Reborn exclusive to Ahlul Bayt TV the only channel broadcasting the pristine teachings of the Ahlul Bayt peace and blessings be upon them all exclusively in the language of English. Uh, and it is my honor to welcome to the studio today a sister whose story is as unique as everybody else's, but is, is, is more so for reasons that um, no doubt will come to light as the program uh, continues, inshallah. Without any further delay, I'd like to welcome Sister Layla Hussein to the studio. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much for coming down. I know you've come from a very long way, so thank you very much for that. Uh, may Allah bless you. Um, sister, as I said, of course, you have a very compelling story uh, mm -hmm. about your journey to where you are, alhamdulillah, today. Um, but first and foremost, can you just give us some insight as to your background ethnically and so on and so forth, please? Uh, yes. Um, I come from France from um, a family who is not religious, but uh, originally uh, Jewish. And um, they are not practicing any religion, and I can call them atheists. And uh, You cannot call them atheists? No, I can. You can? Yes. Okay. Um, we could say that they are atheists. And I, I grew up with uh, strong uh, moral values, uh, especially from my father's side. Um, and uh, me, myself, I was always a very spiritual person. So always, um, I've, I think I've always believed in God. Okay. Um, we always had Bibles, you know, lying at home. And uh, I was always very interested in, in this. And um, at the age of 15, I started to, uh, to really get interested in the religion. Sure. And... Um, but uh, if, if you don't mind me asking, mm -hmm. I mean... You're saying that you were quite a spiritual person. Yes. Yet your parents, you said unequivocally, were atheists. Mm -hmm. your, did you have any siblings, any brothers or sisters? Uh, yes, I have. And were they into religion? No, they're younger than me and they, they're not really into religion. I think, I suppose that's, that's the way that Allah made me. Uh, mm. Sometimes, uh, you know, someone can have some uh, more spiritual side to them. So for me, religion has always had an importance. Sure. So despite the fact that the house was, uh, you were living with your family members who none of them were religious, mm -hmm. uh, you still consider yourself to be a spiritual being. Yes. Okay, thank you. And also you mentioned just briefly about you were brought up to, with good m morality and good values. Yes. What exactly, but by your father predominantly, but what exactly are you referring to when you say that? Um, I suppose that uh, the, compared to my other friends of the same age uh, mm. uh, living in, in France uh, who were quite free to do as they please and maybe were not as respectful uh, um, to their parents, uh, we'd been brought up with strict uh, values. Uh, my father being from Portugal, which is quite a conservative country, mm. um, he always tried to raise us so we are uh, good individuals and um, respectful to the parents, trying not to, uh, you know, go out um, or hang around with friends, you know, as it is in the West. So, um, yes, very strict. I think very comparable to Muslim values, actually, mm. which helped me afterwards because mm. I didn't find it difficult, the transition sure. between the two. Sure. And this, this part about not going out, I mean, mm. I... I of course, coming from a Christian background myself, mm -hmm. know that even, let's say, you get a family that are considered to be quite religious Christians, let's say. Mm. You know, the idea of their children going out when they're 15 or 16, I don't know, to parties or to the pub, was considered normal. Very rarely would you find, unless they were ultra-religious, mm -hmm. would you fi find a family that considered themselves to be religious, say, Jews or Christians, yeah. not doing the things that everybody else in society did. Now, in your particular case, you're saying your parents consider themselves to be atheists. Mm -hmm. So what was the driving force, do you think, behind your father, or let's just say both of your parents, not even allowing you necessarily to go out that much? Um, 
I'm not quite sure if it's maybe protection. Mm. Um, it's uh, it was in his culture uh, also to um, to be quite protective of the, of the women and uh, having keeping the name of the family um, mm. sort of clean if you sure, want. Sure. Sure. And so I know, for example, when I reached the age of going to university, although I had very good grades, my father was really opposed to it, which is why I didn't go to university at the end, mm. because for him, you know, it was source of all evils to, you know, for, for me to be on my own. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay. So it was, it was that, that strict. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, so like I said, I think it is more uh, in a protection point of view. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, again, uh, going back to what you mentioned earlier about having Bibles mm -hmm. or the Old Testament, because you, you, you mentioned how at least your mother was Jewish. Yes. Um, were these books that were kept on the top shelf and gathered dust, or were they, was this something that you, you read yourself? I mean, how would you... I'm just trying to understand, mm -hmm. from your perspective, how you would familiarise yourself with, this, with the, the teachings in these, in these uh, scriptures when... The surrounding environment, presumably not just in the home, but your friends as well, wasn't one that would encourage you to, to delve into religion. So, I mean, did you delve into religion, find out about, for example, the story of the prophets? And if so, how did you go about it? Uh, yes, I suppose that because our upbringing was very strict, I kind of find, uh, I found solace in religion somehow. That's, that's, you know, in hindsight, if I think about it, um, that was um, my, my thought process then. And uh, when I started to read, we had Bibles with the illustrations. And as a child, it really appealed to me. And uh, there were very... One Bible that we had was uh, with uh, stories of, of the prophets, but very simple, kept very simple for sure. children. And I really enjoyed reading about these. And I enjoyed reading about the lives of the prophets. So... I kind of related, uh, you know, somehow to, to the struggles that they were going through. Sure. And, and me being uh, the only one in my family who was actually thinking about religion. Sure. And at this particular young age, before you'd gone into any in-depth uh, studies, mm. was this something that was apparent to your parents? I mean, did they uh, single you out as the spiritual child, if you like? Yes, they singled me out as the crazy one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they definitely, uh, I was definitely on my own mm. uh, in that journey. Sure. Um, obviously, when it was still about the religion that my parents were familiar with, there was no problem whatsoever. Sure. Uh, so uh, they were a bit concerned that I wouldn't live my life as a, as a you know, normal person. Although for my father, he was quite happy because he was uh, keeping in line with why he wanted me to, how he wanted me to behave. Live your life, sure. Yes, so he was kind of uh, um, appeased in the sense that he knew that I would never do anything wrong. Sure. So he was quite happy about it. At the same time, he was afraid that I was going to become too extremist. Sure, sure. And... Uh I, at least it's my understanding that mm. you have Jewish families that aren't that religious, but they would still observe the Sabbath, for example. And mm. so uh, was this the case for you or no? Uh, no, yeah, they weren't really observing anything. Sure. Uh, so I think it wouldn't have been a problem if I, if I would to have gone to Christianity. I don't, I don't think it would have been a problem. Sure. Uh, but uh, obviously when it came to Islam later, that was a big issue because of the political surroundings around that as sure. well. And what was your impression and the family's impression of Islam? Uh, you know, growing up in France, uh, again, you know, forgive me for mm. generalising, but my impression would be that it would be quite negative. Yes, it was very negative. Uh, we were living in a village, so it was not even a city. Mm. Uh, very few Muslims in there. And uh, in general, Muslims were seen as uh, barbaric people always trying to wage war creating problems in the world, terrorists, um, you know, these sort of views. Uh, women oppressed, um, husbands beating their wives, the whole prejudice that we hear constantly about Muslims and Islam. And uh, so that, that was their view. And that was my view back then as well. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is uh, uh, sadly 
the impression that you had about Islam. Yes. So you mentioned how you were a spiritual child mm -hmm. uh, and you were able to read Bibles uh, which had the pictures in and so on and so forth, you know, that catered to your age yes. as a young child. When you started to become a teenager and a bit older, at what point did you decide to start taking this zeal within you further? Um, when I was 15 and I started high school, um, I kind of uh, wanted to uh, know uh, what my path would be, religiously speaking. And um, I had very briefly looked into Christianity um, because it was obviously from my father's side. And uh, for me, the argument that uh, Jesus be upon him uh, was the Son of God and the Trinity uh, was v so hard to explain that um, logically speaking, uh, I, I couldn't accept that. So this uh, religion for me was straight away, I couldn't uh, even consider it. So I went to what I thought, because it's the first monotheism revealed, I thought that my, my mother's religion, Judaism, Judaism uh, is actually the true path. And um, I started to, uh, to learn about it and, and started to practice uh, so all of this from the age of 15. Really? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and uh, what, uh, I mean, in terms of understanding more about the religion, I guess you wouldn't go to your mum for, no. for, as a source of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So what was it, over the internet or were you buying books? Uh, mainly books. Uh, there was a little bit of internet, obviously at that time, uh, internet was just the beginning of the internet, it's not like now. So it was mainly books and, and other Jewish people as well, mm. whom I was asking to. And um, yes, so mainly oh. on my own, by sure. myself. Sure, sure. Mm. And did this give you some, some peace within? Yes, yes. At first I was really convinced that I was on the true path because for me, it was the or originator of all monotheisms. So it's all where it started from. So it couldn't be wrong. And uh, there is a lot of beautiful things in Judaism as well. Sure. A lot of traditions, very old traditions, very preserved religion in some way. And um, I was attracted by the fact that, as opposed to the Christians, the Jews actually have... Um, apart from the inner belief, also the outer commandments that you have to follow. Um, mm. so, so it was a, a balance, if, if you like, it was a balance between yes. the inner and the outer. Absolutely, mm. yes. Okay, alhamdulillah. So, uh, so you found what seemed at the time the answer to that uh, vacuum within you. Yeah. So what, uh, what went wrong? Why, why, why did the story not end there? <laughs> So when I was 18, um, I moved to Israel in order to be able to, um, to grasp what Judaism is all about even better. For me, it was very important to uh, go to the Holy Land and experience that. Um, so I went there and I studied in a women's seminary. Wow, so you left France, you yeah. left the family home mm -hmm. uh, just because of this love that you had for religion and you wanted to get more of that experience? Yes. So, yeah. okay, so you ended up in Israel at the age mm -hmm. of 18 yeah. and you enrolled yourself in a seminary? Yes. Okay. So I learned a lot there. Obviously, uh, I was living as an Orthodox Jew. There was no more restriction because obviously in France it's very difficult even to be, to be a Jew fully because of the uh, Shabbat, uh, like, if I want to work, I would have to uh, stop working on Friday afternoon, which is not really possible in a Western country. Sure. Not work on Saturday at all. Keep all the religious festivals, very difficult. So when I reached there, I felt so happy that I felt home. And it was not even in a political sense of view. It was purely on a religious point of view. I visited a lot of uh, shrines of the rabbis and obviously the Wailing Wall which was such an experience for the first time. It was absolutely great. Um, so, yeah. And did you wail or pray there yourself? Yeah, every okay. day I was going there praying and I was 
really giving everything I had, um, you know, to, to be able to, to learn and more and to be able to practice as, as fully as I could. Sure. Uh, I was under the impression, um, again, you have to forgive my naivety here, but I was under the impression that there's some sort of friction, even in Israel, between Orthodox Jews and, if you like, the secular Jews, and so that things don't always go hand in hand. Absolutely. Uh, where I was living, it was a purely Orthodox Jew area. Usually, uh, it's very separated, so you, you will not really find religious and um, or secular Jews living together. Right. There are a lot of clashes, actually. Mm. Um, and the fact that the religious people in Israel are exempt to go to army, okay. that creates a lot of friction as well. So people become envious of, of those that don't go into um, the army? Or? Not envious, but they, they are angry at them. Hmm. As in, why are you living in Israel and you're not taking part in sure. our struggle? Sure. Because the religious Jews in general are not Zionists. Sure, sure, of course. Mm. The, the Orthodox Jews. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, brilliant. Um, now, the interesting part comes now. Mm -hmm. Because here's a young lady, <laughs> forgive my excitement, but um, <laughs> I mean, when you told me I was, uh, I was taken aback, as I'm sure you remember. Here's a young lady who decides to go and search about Judaism because mm -hmm. it's the first monotheistic religion. It's the religion of her mother. She studies it in France, and then from there finds that, no, I need to actually go to the Holy Land itself and enroll myself, admit myself, get, gain admission to a seminary there. So you're doing all this. You're living in an Orthodox Jewish community, yet at this particular juncture in your life, you meet Muslims. Yeah. My first contact with Islam, uh, believe it or not, uh, was uh, with the sound of the Azan. Um, obviously, I had seen Palestinians before, but I, I wouldn't class that as an encounter with Islam. Uh, I was living uh, just, uh, my village was uh, facing an Arab village, and every morning I used to wake up to the sound of the Azan because it was so powerful, and I was, Jerusalem is like a, a valley. Um, um, yeah. So the, what the sound? So the sound, the sound travels. Actually, yes, travels. And and I used to find this so beautiful. It actually made me think: Can this religion that everybody is saying it's such a bad and and a barbaric and a violent religion produce something as beautiful? So that was my first question mark, really. And about. this, of course, I'm assuming you you couldn't understand what was being recited. No, I couldn't understand at all. Wow. I, just, I just saw the beauty in it. Mm. And from then, I d obviously didn't want to become Muslim at that point. I was, I was happy with my religion. But I just wanted to, as someone who is very analytic, I wanted to actually um, find out for myself whether what is being said about Islam is true or not. And, and not just um, be contempted with what people tell me about it what the general opinion is about Islam. So at that point, that was not in, enough for me. And uh, I had also all this moral problem with the, the Palestinian issue, sure. the way that they've been treated as uh, second-class citizens. Although when I came to Israel, it was the second intifada. So on the Jewish side, there were suicide bombings every single day, mm -hmm. uh, which I've been witness of uh, one of them myself. Really? Really? Yeah. So uh, I just wanted to understand more about this issue as well on the human point of view. Mm. This is quite interesting to hear mm. that you, because obviously we, we tend to look at things or, or, or some of us look at things from the side or from the perspective, from the viewpoint of the Palestinian suffering. Mm. You actually were on the receiving end of some of these suicide bombings. Now, how is it? Okay, you've heard the Adhan, fair enough. But you grew up, you said you grew up in France, and I asked you that you probably didn't have a great opinion about Muslims, and you said categorically we hated Muslims. Yeah. Uh, and you, you mentioned some of the, the views or some of the ideas, misconceptions you had about Islam. Mm -hmm. Now you're living in an Orthodox Jewish community. Again, mm -hmm. they're not Zionists, so that wouldn't necessarily mean they would by default hate Muslims. But yeah. you have seen 
a suicide bombing going off. Yeah. Surely this should dictate that you wouldn't really want anything to do with Muslims. Yeah. It was really at first, uh, when I started to look into Islam, it was purely on an intellectual point of view. And uh, I... I'm, always, I'm someone who is always aware of other people's suffering. And the same way that I was aware of the Jewish people's suffering, I was also thinking about, you know, also on the Palestinian point of view, bearing in mind that uh, it was just a couple of months uh, before I moved to Israel, there was that terrible image of that little Palestinian child mm. being shot at w in his, his father's, father's arms. arms. Yes, yes. And these sorts of pictures that I had seen, and they were not shown in Israel, mm. or they were shown as in fabricated. And when I was still in France, we, we could obviously see the full truth. Um, these images never left me. And this, I think, uh, have played a part also in me wanting to know what is going on on the other side as sure, well. Sure, sure. Okay. And um, so you had this adhan, mm -hmm. uh, and you wanted to find out more about Islam. Yeah. So what does a young lady who's living in an Orthodox Jewish community and is studying in a seminary do when she wants to find out more about Islam? I buy a Quran. <laughs> so I thought uh, the misconception that, we, that I had about Islam was that the, the Prophet Muhammad is be upon him, had created a brand new religion that had absolutely no link whatsoever with anything that existed before. Mm -hmm. That was my belief back then. And uh, so I bought the Quran. Uh, I was shaking when I bought it. I really? thought I was doing a big sin. Really? I, I was very unsure about what I was doing, actually. Uh, I was praying that, that my, my God would not punish me, but I needed to do that. Because for me, it's not about just following what um, I feel is right or following my mother's religion. For me, it's following the truth. Sure. So uh, at that point, I needed to find out. So I, I bought the Quran, started to read it, and I was astonished. Because? Because the old prophets, well, a lot of the prophets from the Bible were mentioned there. And you were familiar, obviously, with exactly. their story. Same exact stories. Uh, I've noticed that Islam didn't bring anything new really uh, looking at it and there was it was so similar to Judaism actually I was sure. blown away sure, sure. <laughs> so th that was uh, the first surprise and um, yeah sorry so you you bought this Quran <laughs> yeah and you started to read and you you found that it was very similar to your own beliefs as a, as a, as a mm -hmm. young Jewish woman um, what about encountering Muslims? Had you, how did you, I mean, I'm assuming at some point you would have had to at least have met some Muslims. Yes, I, um, after a couple of months within the research, I started to want to make contact with my Palestinian neighbours. Um, and uh, so So when I, you say neighbours, you're talking about the next village? Yes. Oh, when I say neighbours as a, in Israel, usually we say Arabs are neighbors. So, you know, I wanted to know more about. Uh, okay. Sometimes we even call them our cousins because they're so close yet so far. Mm. Uh, so I, I started to make some friendship. Uh, in the eastern part of Jerusalem, they're all Arabs. Sure. So I started to go there and um, I made some friends there, started to speak. And I, at first, I was very scared actually that I even thought the first time that I met someone, I thought they're going to kill me or something. I was really scared. <laughs> or you might get kidnapped. Yes, exactly, because there'd been a few cases actually going on before. So um, anyway, they welcomed me so so warmly. I couldn't sure. believe it. But I mean, how, what did you do? Just go up <clears throat> to a cafe and start speaking to people? Uh, no, I started to uh, get contacts from uh, from the internet, having religious discussions uh -huh. on the internet okay. with people. And then after a few weeks, uh, we sort of met in public place. So sure. it was all sisters. Sure. And, you know, it was all in public places. So sure. I, there was no really problem. Weren't people that. looking at you a bit funny? I mean, I'm assuming... People will be able to tell who's, well, especially if you're an Orthodox Jew, because there's a particular way of dressing. So an Orthodox Jew goes to meet some Arab Muslim sisters. Mm. 
you would stick out like a sore thumb, surely? Uh, no, I was wearing the hijab when oh, really? I was going there. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yes. I would have been very... I, I don't think I would be able to uh, walk freely in those places if I was dressed as a Jew. I'm, I'm not sure about that. So sure. I did go there with the hijab. I mean, the Jewish women, they do cover up anyway. So it's just putting the scarf on, really. That, that is different. So I, I did that just in order to be able to approach them and, you know, e more easily. And uh, so then after I started speaking to them, not a lot of them had great knowledge about Islam, but while I was touched, um, my heart was touched with the fact that they accepted me as a Jew. I never said I was Muslim. I never deceived them in that, in that respect. I always said I'm never going to become a Muslim, but I just want to know more about yourselves. I want to know more about your religion. And they accepted me exactly as I am. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, we're due for a break now. When okay. we come back, you can uh, continue with this very interesting encounter and, of course, how you decided to uh, eventually become a Muslim. Uh, you're listening to the story of Sister Layla Hussein. Join us after this short break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> 